The first Home Assistant release of the year is finally here, the 2022.2 update. So let's talk about all of the upcoming features and fixes in this release that the Home Assistant developers and contributors have been hard at work crafting for us to look forward to this month. And there have been over 2,500 contributions to this release, which is a record number for the project, although understandable since there was no January release this year. No huge features in this release, but a lot of what I would call quality of life improvements, as well as some welcome new additions. Let's get into the first one, the media browser, which has actually been just renamed to media. Not only has the name changed, but the media interface has also been cleaned up and reworked to include proper media controls as well as selectable sources. So you can either play content directly on the browser you are using, or you can select any of your speakers, displays, or TVs that you have connected to Home Assistant and play content directly on them, such as from Plex or Spotify. The media controls also work for playing or pausing anything you are playing on these sources too, and it works really well. The media controls are a great step in the right direction and a really welcome addition. Next up, have you ever connected something like your router or access point to Home Assistant for using as device trackers by using something like the Unify integration, and then you are flooded with hundreds of new entities that clutter up your system? Well now, instead of all of these device trackers being enabled by default, Home Assistant will now disable them by default instead, with the only ones being enabled are devices that it recognizes and can pair and match up with an existing entity, for example, your phone. Of course, you can go in and enable any entities that have been disabled, but they will be disabled by default instead. This is a pretty minor but hugely appreciated update as it can really help to keep your instance much cleaner and clutter free, something I will always welcome. There have also been a number of new integrations added in this release as always, but the two that stand out to me that I am personally excited about are the Unify Protect integration and the RTSP to WebRTC integration. Unify Protect has been available for some time through Hacks as a community add-on, but now that project is being merged into the official Home Assistant repo, meaning it is now an official integration. And the Unify Protect is a really great integration and is so well done. So great to see that now becoming an official integration that will now get official support. RTSP to WebRTC is a new integration that I think is going to be really useful for those of you using security cameras in your houses. Essentially, it will allow you to create camera entities in Home Assistant that use WebRTC streams converted from RTSP. And now I know that all sounds a little bit technical, but the upshot is that WebRTC streams will work much better in Lovelace and in your browser than using normal RTSP streams. Both of these new integrations are definitely ones that I'm going to be taking a much closer look at, so make sure to let me know in the comments if that is something you're interested in. Also, this isn't a new integration technically, but I did really want to bring this one up. There's also been support added to the Google Home integration, which allows for using a local fulfillment URL so that Home Assistant can talk directly with your Google Home speakers and displays locally rather than via the cloud. I have added this to mine already and it's pretty easy to do, but if you would like a guide on how to do that, then please do let me know down in the comments. The last new feature added to this release is one that hopefully you won't really need to use ever, but will come in handy if you do need it. And that is a new diagnostics button being added to integrations. And when you click on this, it will allow you to download relevant diagnostic information to your machine. This information will be useful if you ever need to open an issue on GitHub, then you can upload these diagnostics right to the issue and that can help track down your problem. Like I say, not one that hopefully you will ever need, but should come in handy if you ever do. Finally, we come to all of the little things in this release, which are a lot of little nice quality of life improvements. As with every release, there are a bunch of new integrations available to add from the UI, which is always great to see, there is a new shorthand if statement available for templates to make them cleaner and quicker to write. On the UI and UX front, there is a new update button available from the configuration menu, which allows for checking for updates on core, supervisor, and OS with one click. 
And also on that page is a new search box allowing you to search for anything within the configuration menu. Clicking on an integration with only a single device will take you straight to the device page instead of a list with a single device on it. A new known issues button on the integrations page allowing you to quickly see if any issues have been filed for that integration. Auto Discover devices now have the option to take you to the Home Assistant documentation page. Scenes now have a state when they were last activated, which can be viewed in the developer tools, useful for using within templates. And finally, zones now have a state which show the total number of people in that zone, allowing you to run automations based on people entering or exiting that zone. And that is it for all of the bigger new features and there is a bunch more of little improvements with this release too, which you can see here in the release notes. Go ahead and check those out in the release notes if you would like to. But I did finally want to mention the breaking changes. There is what I would call a larger than average amount of breaking changes in this release. Most of them are just from old integrations going away or new integrations becoming available in the UI rather than in the config files but make sure to check out those breaking changes and read them really closely just to make sure you aren't affected by anything before you update so you don't run into any problems. And there we go, the first Home Assistant release of the year coming out tomorrow as of the time you are watching this and what is going to be the start of many more good releases this year. Let me know down in the comments what improvement you are most looking forward to from the 2022.2 release. For me, it's actually the local Google fulfillment URL, one I'm sure that lots of you will also appreciate too. But that is about going to do it for this video. If you would like to support the channel, then you could do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.